Nader here with Iron Max Levy. All the way from Germany. All the way from Cottbus, Germany. How are you, Max? Yeah, I'm fine. That's day three. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you feel a little bit the effort. But we're not worried too much about this six day because we know you're doing well. You just finished European Championships, which you weren't even planning on going to, right? Yeah, I just uh, got a phone call Sunday night if I could come <laughs> the next day and uh, ride with the team uh, for the Euros. Yeah. Just two days later. M Mr. Dependable. They can yeah. always call on Max yeah. to show up and deliver. Yeah, that's uh, also what you learn by years yeah. uh, of cycling. And yeah, so I did. Good. Good, good, good. And then came pretty much straight here. You went home for a few days. Yeah, just two days driving home after the Kieran final until uh, three o'clock or something. How many years have you been racing bikes? When did you start? How old were you? Um, yeah, I started 20 years ago. Yeah. But uh, like real racing, when, when you... I'm elite since 2006. Yeah. Well, you did something recently as an amateur racer. <laughs> Something very different. So, I mean, you are, you are the just the absolute like people talk about sprinters and they think about people like Caleb Ewan right here yeah. who won Champs Elysees like as a sprinter. Well, he's a great sprinter. Don't want to knock that, but you are a real, real, Respond. real sprinter. Like ten less than ten seconds, full gas, and then you decided to do the exact opposite spectrum. Which was the Iron Man. He did an Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. You're crazy. Because I can. Because you, now you, yes, you know you can. Why not? Life is short. But what Iron Man did you do? I did the uh, Iron Man, the European Championship in Frankfurt. When did you decide you wanted to take on that challenge? Um, in my mind, I had it for a long time. I was interested in, in see if, if you can do it. So mm -hmm. you see Iron Man, they are only 50 pros yeah. aiming for victory and all the rest is just doing it to survive. Yeah. And uh, if you see people who survived, you think like, I can do this? If they can do, <laughs> why shouldn't I? And uh, yeah, day by day, I, I was thinking more and more about this and uh, I think one year ago, um, I knew I will do it. Yeah. So right here at the Six Day London, uh, I started my preparation in walking from hotel to the track yeah. all the time. <laughs> That's why we walked so much. <laughs> yes. It was uh, the first step for a sprinter to, yeah. to get running. The real scheduled thing started one year ago. What gave you the most motivation to train like that? To switch your training up and, and to try something totally different and to really just test your body to its maximum in a totally different way? It's a mix of, of different things. Yeah? I uh, wanted to, to see if I could do it mm -hmm. and uh, how I could do it and it was also about uh, training myself and find find my myself in a in a different mode from from sprinting to doing some uh, like you said opposite uh, endurance training but also to be responsible for yourself mm -hmm. to to think about what you do and, and if it works or not and I did some some special tests to find out if it works and uh, <laughs> I could see yeah okay my, my endurance develops I just wanted to get out get out of the system uh, track cycling is, is really nice and um, spectacular but still it's after 15 years it's a lot of time yeah. it's a lot of time and you want to see new faces and and explore something something else and you also find out if you still want to do something mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that's why I'm back. It was a good break from the, the routine. Yeah, oh, yeah not sweet. only for my body but also yeah. good to see you. Max Pedro, how are you? Yeah. But also for my um, for my mind, changing yeah. my mind. About a year before that Christina had her accident. Almost like brother, sister, you and Christina, very close. Did something like that play on wanting to do it even more? Like, you know what? Life is short, things can change today, tomorrow. Yeah. Like, why not go out and test yourself? How did that give you motivation or, or just, just make you want to decide, I'm going to do it? Maybe it was more the point that uh, I said, okay, I, I want to get something else. Um, maybe to find out for myself if I still want to be a track racer or not mm -hmm. because after this crash and uh, all the things happened around you 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 question a lot uh, for cycling but also for your life and this is the other point to 
think about things you you always wanted to do and then you always say ah oh, yeah i do it later 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 and so for this uh, it was also that i said okay i do it now yeah and uh, right right from the beginning i uh, i was speaking with her already before when i had it in mind and she said yeah. if, if you do one day i i will come and so right when i entered the registration i said okay <laughs> i'm doing it <laughs> you you have a you have a date next year <laughs> and so she did and uh, i got my my finisher medal from her so that was so a cool. special moment yeah. yeah she picked you up from your house yeah yeah and then took you to the race so you got to hang out before and then gave you your finisher medal uh so you had constant interaction and then she met you a few places along yeah. the running course, correct? Yeah, in the, in the running course and also after the swimming. Yeah. And uh, when I was out of the swimming, she said I look like a shark. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of motivation. <laughs> oh, that's good. You you have to swim a ridiculous yeah. amount, but, ride yeah. a bike. You can you know how to ride a bike. That's yeah. okay. You could do that all day. And then running. Oh, yeah. Which of the three tested you the most mentally? Um, because of the distance, the, the marathon for sure was the longest thing. But uh, mentally, it was also hard to, to get the swimming. Because, um, yeah, if you ever did a triathlon and you are in the middle of nowhere in the water and there are more than 200 people around you, it feels like, uh, yeah, I was a little bit afraid. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't, I'm, I'm not a good swimmer, so I wasn't used to, to swim with other people. and. Also, if you have the turns and everything, uh, it gets really squeezed together. That was the thing I was I was the most afraid of. Still with the running, okay, yeah. If you don't feel comfortable, you can still stop. You can walk. You can stop. walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, in a swim, you can't say, "Oh, you drown. No, I uh, stop." So <laughs> I was pretty proud of myself to do the four kilometers in one and a half hour. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't wear the neoprene suits. Yeah because it was too hot it was the hottest day in germany with 39 degrees in the afternoon and so one week earlier it, it would have been with the neo and normal weather yeah but uh, on this case it was really really hot yeah so yeah i was i was super happy with the time yeah, you got through the swim you you uh stayed there mentally to be able to make it to shore and get onto your bike and then how did the bike go Oh uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I averaged uh, 35 kilometers an hour mm -hmm. and uh, had a an hard average around 135 to 140. And uh, it was it was nice because I, I knew I'm, I'm not going to win or lose it with the bike. I just uh, enjoy. In the end, I thought, okay, now last uh, hour I can I can do it easy. But we had uh, lots of headwind. Yeah. And even it was head, uh, hot headwind. So. You couldn't really relax and come down before the marathon. I did uh, 185 kilometers in five hours and ten. So it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, I think so for a sprinter. Yeah, and then uh, how did you feel getting off the bike? And how did how did the first five ten k feel? Um, it wasn't that bad. I I jumped off the bike and then got my running suit on and. In the beginning, it, I feel pretty good. I, I was running 5 minutes 40 for the kilometer. I was expecting to do the marathon in 4 hours plus maybe 15 minutes for, for getting drinks and food. So I had to run like 6 six minutes the kilometer and I started with 5.40 and I felt pretty good with it. And I was like, oh yeah, oh cool. This is going to work and uh, I will run until kilometer 25 or something and then um, yeah okay then the rest you you make it somehow. We were starting in the shadow and uh, as, as we were on a big river yeah. we changed the sides and there was a side with four kilometers full of sun. Yeah. And, and it was you, you did four loops. Four correct? loops yeah. yeah. If you imagine we have 39 degrees in the shadow it's in the sun it's, it's terrible. Yeah. And, uh, so I could run my speed for 3K, and then the next 2K I, I feel like I, I blew up in 10 minutes. Yeah. And that was the moment you have to accept, okay, this, this is not gonna work. Like I, I was just thinking two minutes before, and uh, I drop off my, my clock, my, my watch to, to not check the speed anymore. And if you do this after five kilometers, you know it's going to be a long, long way. <laughs> yes. At 15 kilometers, I was completely fucked. <laughs> so and then you think about it, it's, it's, it's still more than I ever run before. Yeah. It was pretty hard for my for my head. Where did your thoughts go 
who did you cling on to? You had friends and family and things along the run. So how did that help? And yeah, what, what did you think about? Yeah, I spoke to my family. They were sitting in the shadow, usually with uh, three kids. <laughs> they have to. But I said, I, I need your help in the sun because uh, this is where I, where I got blown. And uh, I tried to, to do things you, you are used to, drink a lot and, and stay focused. But um, there are also some, some really moments where you think stupid things like one thing was, uh, okay, it's now 3.30, so if I quit now, what do I do the, the rest of the day? Yeah. <laughs> this is the question you, I had in my mind, because I, if you give up, you have to live the whole day that you gave up. Yeah. And uh, next thing was, okay, my, my daughters, they, they know I always fight and it's it's important to, to fight and uh, not to give up and how should I explain to them that I give up and uh, this these are things that helped me to get through honestly I can't really remember from kilometer 15 to 28 so one and a half hour is just like it's gone it's gone I felt like when you hit the 28 kilometers barrier there was a sign then you are going to make it. You know, you talk yourself, it's only 10k to go. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's 14. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you know, it's 14. I knew with the speed I had, it's like one hour 40 still to go. It's a long time for a sprinter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also you, you did a lot of preparation in your, in your head. And you know, okay, one hour 40 means I still need to drink. I still need to yes. eat. And not to think I'm almost there. You know, when you come to 35, it's... You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last three or four kilometers, it's the hardest. Yeah. We're, we're sitting in the London Velodrome, where you won an Olympic medal. Yeah. You have multiple World Championship titles to your name. There's got to be a sense of confidence, like I can do this. I'm Max Levy. Yeah. Like I've I've been there. I've dug deep. What's the self motivation, self talk about? Like just telling yourself how how awesome, how strong, whatever whatever you have to do yeah it's not that I stand uh, all the day brief next to a mirror and think oh yeah yeah, yeah it's so strong <laughs> um, but sure I, uh, it also gave me a lot of self-confidence to things I, I want to do and I try to do that uh, it works mm -hmm. somehow it, it not always stick to the plan but yeah. uh, I think this is life but uh, I know if I really put my money on something then uh, you know I, I do everything you're gonna finish it to go and yeah. make it work. Awesome. So what's the next big challenge? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in another Olympic Games, um, okay. which would be my fourth. And yes. I think as a sprinter as well for Olympic Games would be a lot. Has anybody ever done more than four as a sprinter? I don't know. I, it's, it's not my motivation to make like the be the sprinter of the most Olympics, but, yeah, uh, but it, it would be great. It's, it's definitely on the bigger end. Yeah, I think so. After I see, I think I still have some time to do a race across America. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll do RAM. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I have a good equipment now. I have a good TT yeah. bike. Do you want to do a two-man team or an eight-man? Uh, one man. One man. You no, want to go fuck. solo? <laughs> I'll be kidding. on your crew. I'm not doing solo. <laughs> cool, Max. Well, hey, it's fun hanging out as always. And then after this, uh, you got World Cups. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone and yeah. doing something like an Ironman. I think people expect that you can be the best in the world on a track bike as a sprinter but to, to do something totally different outside of your realm I think it it gave me strength when I was running my marathon a few weeks ago and I know it gave so many other people inspiration to know you can that, do it. that you can do it yeah I mean you, you, you are you want to, you can do it. you're an exception exceptional athlete so that helps but there's still a lot of variables and it's very difficult so uh, Good job, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Yes, you too. Later.